Good evening. This meeting of February 25th, 2013 of the Dubuque Community School District Board of Education is called to order. Our mission is to develop world-class learners and citizens of character in a safe and inclusive learning community. Roll call, please. Mr. Barton. Here. Mr. Baitin. Present. Mr. Davis. Mr. Donahue. Here. Mr. Kruger. Present. Ms. Ryan. Here. Mr. Strelo. Present. Mr. President, I move that we approve the agenda as submitted. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as submitted. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We have reached the first of our uh, strategic plan updates, and it's only appropriate that we, uh, we've rounded out. I think uh, staff has been working very hard yep. uh, to round out that strategic plan, layering in the uh, specific goals and time frames. And I really, uh, I'm looking forward to this, uh, a very robust tool in terms of uh, a strategic plan document that uh, uh, will allow anybody and everybody uh, to uh, really drill into the district's plans and our results uh, to whatever level of detail they would choose to. Uh, they want to keep it at the high level they can. Uh, if they want to get down into the, the, uh, the very specific uh, uh, items, uh, we'll provide them with that kind of access, which I think is Absolutely. fantastic. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the superintendent and let him walk us through that document, and then we will uh, uh, we'll open it up for comments. Absolutely. I'd like to start with a brief you know, history and a little bit of talking about the goals of about what we are going to present here as far as the uh, strategic plan update. As you know, uh, on November 27th of this past year, about three months ago, we passed a, a new strategic plan for the district. And in that plan, we tried to, or we did focus on, on the five goals, student achievement, student development, community engagement, effective resource management, and employee excellence. And we talked a lot about this being a document that was a living document, a changing document. We've all been through a strategic planning process before, either in our careers or in other districts where we create a strategic plan and really forget about it for three or four years and then somebody say, would come up with the idea, shouldn't we talk about the strategic plan? We'd pull it out and dust it off. And we really thought if we're going to go to the effort to build a strategic plan that was uh, far reaching and had an impact on students, it needed to be something that we focused on monthly, weekly, daily. And so we wanted to uh, create a plan that had some some specificness to it, but really was stated about the, I guess, the 30,000 foot view. What are the big picture changes of uh, that we'd like to implement for our students and their educational experience in the district? <laughs> the next layer then is what we're gonna talk about today is the uh, how we're going to report out on that progress. And we've talked about, um, or we have set up in the calendar three additional board meetings on a yearly basis to report out on the strategic plan. And so this is the first uh, time that we've, we've had that opportunity. And so we really wanted to take uh, a lot of time and figure out exactly how this report should look so that it was not only a document that could be brought to um, school board meetings, but also one that could live very uh, easily on our website so that it was um, a constant that, that um, our stakeholders um, could, could look at to, to see what work uh, we're about at the district because the value of the strategic plan, and if you remember one of the first things we did was to share it far and wide. And we gave out thousands of copies of this plan because you know, we know that there's a little bit of a risk when we hand those out. Somebody might hold us accountable for it, but that's the whole point of having a strategic plan is being able to be uh, held accountable for that. So before you get too deep into looking at the form, if you would uh, give me an opportunity to talk a little bit about the format, uh, and then we're going to have uh, a variety of folks speak about the, the different goal areas, the same people who spoke about the, the goal areas when we presented this, the strategic plan. This is really a, you know, an ongoing effort between a whole lot of folks who work here uh, at the forum and throughout the district. So Mike has on your screen, which hopefully is also on the television as we speak, uh, the front page of our website. So if you're on our website, um, you'll see under top news for February strategic plan update. So if you click on that site, it will take you to this page um, that links with our strategic plan. The two, we produced two strategic plans um, in November, one that was the general overview and then one that was the full version that uh, listed some specific bullet pointed uh, actions which we're really finding out is the one that most people are interested in anyway. Very little request to have the overview, but a lot of folks looking at the full version. So 
Then below that uh, is the status report where it will stay uh, until the next time we report out, at which time it will be replaced with the new status report update. So easy to find on our website. Click on the strategic plan on the, on the front page uh, and it will take you to this page. So if you click on the uh, strategic plan update, you'll come to a document that looks like the one that I've handed out uh, to the board. Um, so if Mike goes to the first one and stops, we'll take a look at some of the components of it. So our first uh, goal in the strategic plan was around student achievement, and that was to ensure that all students have the necessary skills to be 21st century college and career ready, uh, promote college, career, and employability skills. And then the next, if you remember on the, on the strategic plan, there was the goal, could you back up just a little bit, Mike? There were, there were the goals, the action steps, and then the assessment. So we've just reordered that a little bit on the update. So we have the goals, then we have the uh, assessment. So um, to what extent are third graders, sixth graders, and 11th graders proficient in reading and math? To what extent are students graduating with 21st century college and career skills? So all of the, the three, I won't read it all to you, the three uh, assessments that we would use. So we wanted to create a document, as, as Mr. Donahue said, that was, uh, offered as much, offered a big picture view or the ability to drill down into the, to the specifics. So, and we'll get to in a minute. Um, so we've linked to it here, and, and don't go there yet, Mike, but you'll see a <coughs> click here. So on this click on the, uh, uh, on the assessment is all of the data in the district around these three assessments. And it will be the same for all of our uh, uh, goal areas. Um, also, we also took the action steps and we wanted to come up with an icon, so a kind of a quick reference as to how are we doing. So if somebody wanted to just get a quick view and wanted to know in our opinion how we were doing, um, you've got significant progress, which is the red uh, tablet screen, I guess. Uh, steady progress, which is orange, and some progress, which is yellow. So all of the, could you come back out, Mike? Okay, so all of our action steps are designated based on just a, a color-coded icon. Next to that is a status comment. Next to that are next steps. I'm going quickly because we'll back up and go through each one of these by the, the folks most responsible for that. And then next to that is the time frame for the next step. So what we decided on a time frame, instead of putting a specific date, we uh, landed on um, season and year. So you'll see spring of 2013, so that's right around the corner, coming up, uh, coming up quick. You'll see some that are fall of 14, so you, you get the picture. We didn't put um, short term, intermediate, and long. We just put uh, a season and, uh, and a, a date. So let's back up to what you can link. So you could look at this. If I'm a community member, a stakeholder, I could look at this, read the status comment, what are the next steps that we'll be doing, and when will we accomplish those things? Okay, so that's a very broad view of where we're at. But if I'm somebody who's interested in going more in detail, maybe I'm skeptical uh, of, of these, uh, uh, these color-coded icons, I need a little more proof, or I'm an educator or a person who's interested in the details, I can click on this here where, where it says click here to view related assessments. So Mike, if you would click that, please. So that takes you to a page. Uh, you'll see again all the goal areas, student achievement, uh, student development, community engagement. So they're all listed. And then they, these are the current uh, pieces of, of, of data that we have linked to that. <laughs> so what we hope to have created here was the opportunity to continue to add data to this. So some of this will be updated. Uh, on a yearly basis. Sometimes we'll add to this as far as new data is gathered. One of the things you'll notice as we progress this evening is that in many areas there isn't any data yet. And at first that might seem strange, like why don't they have this data? But if you back up and think about that, that's the intent of our strategic plan. One of the things we heard clearly from the board is don't report out to us what you've always done. Report out to us what you're going to do that's different to move the, to the district into a better place for our, for our students. And so it's almost a positive thing in the short run if that we have areas with no data because that's a new area that we're, we're pushing forward and we'll 
talk about how we're going to collect baseline data. There just doesn't happen to be baseline data in some of those areas. Now, if I come back in a year or six months and there's no data, you're going to look at me like, okay, what's explain that one. But, it, but in this initial go through, it makes all the sense in the world that there would be some areas that there's not data because we want to push uh, beyond that. So again, you were on the, Mike, could you back all the way out? I just I apologize if this gets redundant. Could you go back a page? So we are under all of the, this happens to be student achievement, they all take you to the same place. You click on the, on the microscope or the uh, magnifying glass, if you'd click on that, Mike. Takes you again to this page, so you get student achievement, student development. You'll see student achievement has a lot of data points because that's something that we've always collected data on and we'll continue to collect data on. Some of these other ones, uh, we haven't gotten there yet. Um, so one area of interest I know on the board is where are we at with middle school, high school participation in co-curricular activities. So if you click on the highlighted data piece, it takes you to our data. Okay, so for the 11-12 school year, and we'll update this on a yearly basis, we'll have to have a discussion about how much historical data we'll keep there. Um, go down to, uh, uh, to uh, effective resource management. So click on the unspent balance data. So there's where we've been as far as an unspent balance. So there's an awful lot of data available there to the general public. Again, this is an attempt to uh, hold ourselves accountable, but also to be tr as transparent as possible. I, I don't know, uh, I'm sure there are examples out there, but I can't point to another district who provides this much data really at the click of a button to any of the stakeholders that, that might be interested in this. So at this point, I am going to turn it over to Lynn, who will talk us through um, our first uh, 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 goal of student achievement. And Lynn, there's a pointer there by if you're interested. All right. Thanks. So um, just a few of the things that we revised a tad bit. I mean, getting into it, you're finding the weaknesses of actually some of the original document and how we want it to be more complete. So as you look um, at the goal, obviously that has stayed the same. When we got to the assessment pieces, and this is true in the two pieces that I'm reporting on, to me it's really very important to make sure that we're using somewhat of a backwards design. What is it we believe in and then how are we going to say to the community that we've actually done it? So a lot of times there's always this, and this is true when we work with teachers too as they work with lesson design, there's always like what am I going to do tomorrow? As opposed to saying you got to keep that big global picture in mind, make sure that you can actually evaluate what it is you say you're going to evaluate. And actually in the student achievement piece as Stan had pointed out, that's a little bit easier. It's what schools are really very used to do. It's much more of a challenge in the student development piece and we struggle with that and I would say to you when we get to that piece that we are, there's pieces that we're still working on with regard to that. Um, well, looking at student achievement, we expanded our original question, I believe, if you look at one of the original documents, we talked about students being proficient as third and sixth graders in reading. And we're like, okay, that's a problem. Uh, we need to make sure that we're keeping our high schools accountable, that we're measuring what high schools are doing, and we wanted to make sure we're expanding that into reading and math. And actually, some of the data um, we won't, I have examples of data, we won't go into data like let me tell you what is in this data. You can look at that on your own. But we've already expanded into the science and social studies areas as well. So, Lynn, can I just jump mm -hmm. in for a second? So to give you what uh, I believe our plan should be moving, moving forward, as Lynn talked about, um, not going too deep into the data here, we'll go in deeply into the data in subcommittee meetings or in future reports. One of the things that I will put out there is that uh, we have three meetings per year set up. We may want to keep that three meeting schedule. We may want to move to five. And the reason I say five is because there are five goal areas. And take an hour, an hour and a half, once a year to get really specific and just talk about student achievement. And then another meeting just talk about student development. We certainly can do that in three meetings and just combine two of those and, and understand the meetings might be a little longer, or we could do it in five and, and have just a specific meeting where we could get down into the, to the more specific data and the details. The problem is if we try to do that all every time, the meetings will be 10 hours. <laughs> so it, it would make more sense to, to break, in my opinion, my recommendation would be to either look at five meetings, one per goal area as a <coughs> supplemental board meeting, or condensing uh, two of those 
or, or those five into three meetings. Sorry, Lynn, just nope, popped nope. into my head. So if we could, um, when we look at the second question, we had, um, we had no changes there. And then the third question, I've just rephrased, that is the annual No Child Left Behind trajectories. Those are things that the board's accountable for. There's something that the, in terms of federal accountability. So we still have that. That tends to be, in the past, something we've spent a lot of time on. I think what you're gonna see is, um, in our questions and in the data presented, we're looking at a much more global approach to what we expect students to do. So, Mike, if you could go to click where you see the related, related data, I will say that these questions that we've asked are about um, how can how can I share with the Board of Education and to the community that in fact students in third, sixth, and eleventh grade are more proficient in reading and math than they have in the past? So the subcommittee has already seen these questions and Matt actually made reference to them at our last meeting. There are three main questions, uh, sub-questions, that we thought we needed to look at as a district in order to say to you, in fact, we are making progress. And the first one is, we now know that the Common Core is the state of the nation. There is a common curriculum across the country. So when teachers come in, whether it's science, social studies, language arts, reading, there are expectations in this country that never existed up until two years ago. That's still a, very much a paradigm shift for our teachers. We still have people who are like, going into my classroom, going to shut the door, because this is what I think is important for kids. Certainly we don't deny those strong philosophical beliefs on the part of teachers. Go forth, do good. But there is a set that cannot be ignored of curriculum expectations that the Common Core gives us. So we see this as a, an important question, not just to report to the parents and to the community as to how well our students do in comparison to other students in the district or the country, but it's important for our teachers to know how well they are hitting upon those Common Core standards. So if you could hit on that data piece, um, I would acknowledge to you that, and th again, we're not, my point is not necessarily to look at the data here today, but to look at the format of the data. Is that, mm, oh, there we go. So we have, in the, uh, well, let's use grade four because that's more consistent. Grade three is a little unique of all the grades, is that we can report how we're doing in reading, language, and writing, and in mathematics. We can compare the district with the rest of the country on how well our students are doing in the Common Core. And then finally, as you look at this bottom piece using math as an example, we've identified that these are the five main areas in grade four that we expect our students to have experience and competency in. Um, and we compare the student, there's two points, this was last year's data, it was the first year this report has ever been available to us, and then the one on the bottom is this year's data. So our students in grade four, in terms of how they do algebra, as expected in fourth grade, 60% of our students um, have achieved competency in the questions asked on the test. In terms of their understanding of the number theory, Oh, I think I see again, we're still fixing, got the repeat there, I apologize for that. Measurement and data and geometry. So teachers can go in into a particular grade or as a district, working with Bridget Hamilton on this piece, is that Bridget and I can look at this and say, why are our students performing in this area so we can go in and remediate in very specific areas as a district? This is available to schools by grade, and this is available to parents by their student's name. This report can be obtained through a conversation with the school's principal. So you can go in by topic and find the strengths and weaknesses, child, classroom, school, district. And our, di our data is set up in a way that we're always looking at those four areas so that we can dig deeper, deeper, and deeper. So our, so again, our intent here is to come up with a format where the question is asked in the assessment, where are we at? And there's one example of a data point that will be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, which will add to, which will continue, so that when we show 
on the previous page a red or a yellow or a what was the other color orange uh, tablet there, there's some justification as to why we're moving ahead why we're stagnant and then the next steps as well so that's really where we think the power here is is that it really gives them or an opportunity to to jump into student achievement student development uh, our financial resources all of those types of things so, so where do I see the goal I mean we're at for instance you pull up the the math grid there and we're when you look at the chart at the very top um, and I I have actually been working with instructional coaches and principals on this particular piece of data the goal on this particular is because it's criterion referenced, it's not norm referenced, 100% of the students should meet 100% of the standards. That's the goal of the Iowa core. Each and every child has access and competency in each and every standard. It's a very high goal, but it's not to be perceived as a percentile where it's norm referenced against um, other students. It is perceived as here's everything a fourth grader needs to know how well did our students do against that standard and we want 100 percent of our students to have access and so ability. So where do I see that? That would, can you go to that Mike? Um, the pieces that we've started to do is as people look at these charts adding those particular kinds of questions and what students are expected to do. I don't know if that specific answer has been there. I just worked most recently with a s staff members on this Thursday afternoon, and we determined to put this data in Friday afternoon. But Tom, you're actually talking about is there a number in, on the column that says, here's the goal, yeah. and here's where we are. Right. And, right. and you're going to find those issues on all of the, because they're so new. I mean, we, we are in the process of yeah, developing them. Yeah, this is a brand new data source that we received for the first time well, sure it's the Wednesday. first time we have comparison yeah. data. Oh, so, so, yeah, okay, so <clears throat> I get that, but I think what Tom's saying is we've got we've got a data point that says if you can hit that mic, data the data point that says here's where we're at for I see language of writing. I, I get sure. where the district is overall, and then I get down into the particular item. And, but my question would be. If, Where should we be? If we're at 55 percent, the nation's at 52 in language and writing. For third grade, is at every grade should it be 100 percent? Yes. And so our question would be, if you look at this rate as it sits, it would one would be led to believe that we're just using average Correct. as the benchmark. And I think it's through conversation because this exact issue came up Thursday afternoon with the instructional coaches as they are saying we're going to take this back and formulate this for our own building which I asked them to do and um, a piece of that is these kinds of pieces have to be added. I mean. Um, so our, our ultimate goal is to get to 100 percent but so what, you, what we'll need to do so what you're saying is so then when we come back in a year or six months how much improvement should we have seen during that? Is that your question? I, I want to know. I mean, wouldn't we start with the goal, rather than here's all here's the data? The, the goal. So this is again, we're getting down to Mike. Can you back up to? I mean, I want to see some back goals that light up the district. That's what I want to see, and I'd like to know where I where I can find them, in here. Where are the so, goals that get people jazzed up? <laughs> I don't care about uh, data about where we're at and all that stuff. That's fine. I want to know. So we, we set this goal, ensure that all students have the necessary skills. And so we're saying this is one of the data points that will tell us when we get to our goal that all students have those skills. So it's, it's the goal. This is how we're assessing it. And then now we're moving into uh, the data that tells us are we making progress. So this tells me, and again, you're talking to people who sat, who hammered this out over many meetings in a room, and so we might view it differently. So it's good to have fresh eyes to look at it and say, I, I'm having a hard time tracking. So the goal is right here. That's the, that's the goal that was established in the strategic plan. How are we going to know if we're reaching all students have these skills? We're going to assess it through these things, through third grade, sixth grade, and eleventh graders proficient in reading and math. And so where are we at with that? We're, we're orange. What, what, what's the status comment? 
what are our next steps, but also where are we currently with the data, which so, is what's, so what's I think, there. I think what yeah. Tom is trying to say is, okay, Should this so be to what specific? extent are third yeah. graders, yes. we want to be, uh, so 100 per, well, even, somewhere even up one there. level up. Yeah, one level up. Ensure that 100% of all students have to listen, because right. after that, that's right. what you're measuring but if, is in each of those three areas, right? But if it's 100%, yes. no, again, I think, no child left behind and all of the above is 100 percent but is that a realistic goal and at that point if it just becomes aspirational right. i agree with that why too. you know why not if if we did 55 why not it why shouldn't it be 60 well, and 62 I, yeah, as and i think 100 percent still makes sense because i don't of course show me which of those 100 kids we decide to leave out exactly yeah but i do course. think that in the data section is where you have the ability to so that we start to create Sure. Re meaningful benchmarks of progress. Yeah. I understand we may not be 100, but if we're 57 in writing, and I mean, what is our expectation for a year right. from now? Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and so I'd like to see, the, mm -hmm. and I think you could do it in that, and, you know, within those data tables. Lynn, to, not unlike that thing that you showed, and I'm sorry, but that one, that one form where it was like how to judge the teachers, where there was like, you know, the the ideal number is 20 points in a year for uh, and you'll see that as our as answer to our third question okay absolutely so, so, so the, could you zoom in right here mike uh-oh so are you so question would be current status i'm trying to think of where we would put that goal right up here Above. <clears throat> under assessment i need i personally and again if it's if it's buried in here somewhere else I would like to see some meat on those three bullet points that, that this is our promise to the citizen, this is our promise to the, to the community, this is where we are going with, if you feel that these three assessment measurements are what really counts, I want to be able to measure those. Can I, mm -hmm. I, we, I, we, I think we do measure those. We can, right. we can do yep. that. I mean, this is really, there is absolutely no problem with us looking at that. We looked at the phrase to what extent I mean a lot of times we talk about how far how fast for example I'm gonna to have to look at the fact that we don't even have science and social studies standards to measure yet because they're not going to be out until this spring but that's just part of that status piece mm -hmm. but it is true that with our language arts and our math standards we have those and we need to make hay on those and get moving on those Set our own science and social studies standards before it comes out I mean, can't we have our own standards and if they're we, too low, we obviously need to increase them, but if they're high, that's what we expect. The, right. the standard, though, is not, I think you're thinking of standards being a percentage or a goal. The right. standard is what Lynn referenced earlier, those different right. columns. But you're right. I think for us to say, okay, to find a way to put our current percentage and say where should we be a year from now, two years from now, four years from now, so, so when you say, Mike, that you can do that within the data table, the data, pull it out. So, of the how data. do you do that? I mean, I, well, where, you, it just, uh, I don't want to do the work, but Mike, if you hit hit one of those data tables, I I envision that. And can you blow one up like a language and art or writing? Or just say reading there. There you go. Yeah. I'm thinking that you've got a you've got a read on what the district is you, yeah. you, year over year, but maybe in the heading sure. where it says reading, we would put a 2013 our goal in there sure. our target, yeah. and Perfect. that would be something that we could then compare. You know, e yep. even within the the three subcategories of reading, we could do the very same thing in each of those categories in some kind of common yep. format. Yep. Then That's great. Would we not be looking at it? As I mean, of course, you want it to be 100%. But what would be in what? You know, are we going to stay the same, or is it? Do, what step of growth are we expecting to see every year? Sure. That's realistic. To yeah. Yeah. See, we I would see us doing that. I mean, with your input, sitting yes. down when we refresh the strategic plan once a year, is sitting down and going through those. And I don't know what the number is. I mean, pick a number. Is it is it is five percent? You, you said there's some other there's some kind of benchmarks already in terms mm -hmm. of what you'd see growth year over year. But we ought to. Seems it seems like, like, it like seems we like ought to, to buy into that and seems say like is a it a good way to evaluate the superintendent? Yeah. 
It just, well, and, that, and, that's, <laughs> and that's how it should be. Yeah. As long as it, you know, obviously we're going to go from 60 to 100. Right? Yeah. Without, so based on this, you get 64%. Without, without those edgy, specific goals, this to me just feels like another, another strategic plan warm bath. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, well, we want to be world-class learners, so we click on here and here's where we're at. To me, it doesn't say anything about where we want to go. Mm -hmm. Well, and that was our intent, I guess, if you, if you click back, Mike, is in, in our next steps and, and the timeline. So if you want us to be more specific in the next step, saying, look, we're, as opposed to what are our next... I don't uh, care what the steps are. I well, but if know the steps could be the steps could be data too. I mean, we could put in the next steps. Okay, we're at sixty, and the next step is, is sixty-five. But I, I like it quite honestly. I if that's what the goal is, and we need to put it, I think on this front yeah, I think piece instead of having measure. people yeah, think, down to I it. I think it's it's we've got a good overview yep. and then we're digging way down deep into the data which is good but there's another level in there that just is saying you know that we can look at annually or each time we compare whatever we're looking at and saying here's the growth we've made mm -hmm. in, in this category. So there, there's a lot of ways to represent data and, and I think one of the things that's interesting and it's a term actually Tom has used is you know indicators. What are the indicators? And this is labeled assessment. I think these are really indicators. And, and underneath each, I think you could place, you know, we are here, we need, this is the distance we want to go, that's the, that's the intermediate goal. Mike, could you but there's that? another thing you're missing here, I, I, and, and again, I, I, armchair quarterbacking, and it's the first time I've seen this. Um, there are things on here that you can achieve, and yet there's no status for achieved. Uh, actually, there is. There is. We, we haven't put it in the legend yet, but there are some things that it's, it's a blue check mark. Yeah. Okay. So uh, th that does need to be added to the legend. You're yeah, I, do, I guess I didn't. I, I was sticking on the page you wanted us to stay on. Right. Without going ahead. <laughs> so noted. But I mean, I'm, I'm glad that. to hear that because I think there are. Yep. He's filing rules. I think there are things that are clearly you can achieve and, and mark them as such. Right. Yep. We didn't want to have too many of those things, obviously, because. If it was that achievable, you know, was it strategic? But so that, but that will, we do need I that blue check achievable. mark on there. <laughs> um, Three things: lofty, measurable, and deadlined. Well, I, and I, that's what I, that's all I care about as a board member. I don't, I don't care what you're doing to get there. That's not my job. But I want lofty goals that are measurable and deadlined. Right. And we, we did want to put the next steps on there because there are probably community members, stakeholders who won't, do want to see what our next steps are. But but you're right. We need to show. I think well, where we're at, where we're at, and where we're. we're I would only to add go. to that that they're not everything can not every goal can be deadlined because it defines a process. Right. And sure. yes, there's that, there has to be an outcome of the process, but not everything lends itself to a concrete number. And that's what we have to, we have to weigh that against, I think, what is a reasonable request. I can live with anecdotal. I mean, anecdotal sometimes is all you got. Right. If you're measuring a culture of a high school or measuring a culture of an elementary school, and a gut feeling is about all you got. Well, but, right. but the closer we can get to measurable and deadlined, that to me is where the rubber hits the road on knowing if we're really going yeah, anywhere. Absolutely. Well, and that's why we, if you remember a few minutes ago, I said, I think in the future we're going to have to look at how many of these we can process at any one board meeting. If we're, gonna, if we're going to have a goal setting, and again, that could very likely come through the subcommittee structure, so that when it comes to this, uh, to the full board, we've already set the goal, but if we're gonna have uh, that specific of a data, I think we, we need to think about that recommendation that we look at one or two of these goals during those meetings. I, I think Tammy hit it right on the head. We have, we have a great kind of umbrella and yet we have a lot of data at the bottom. You just yeah. need to just Make breach that. that. Please. Just yeah, breach sure. that a little Ele bit. Elevate it to the, whether Bridget you rename it as Craig's contended an indicator versus an assessment, but it would strike me that's where you could put that. That's where you could put that in this particular section. To what extent are third graders, well, you could put something in there, achieve 64% yes. by a date. And then that way at a glance you could say, okay, there is a goal, there's a timeline. And then you could drill into that, and even have that. It should be continuous through the day. Well, and maybe you have maybe you have both. Maybe you leave the assessment, and then you just add another thing there that current indicator next 
you know. they should be tied to those those if you're using those as assessments yeah. they, they those should be tied individual right. well built incorporate the goal into each of those three right. mm -hmm. yep this is where I mean, I've been watching this process for three terms on the board and this is where I we always stop short mm -hmm. is where we really get clear on what we are going to achieve I have, n I have yet to see a strategic plan in three terms on the board where we set a super lofty goal and say, and we're gonna storm the bass deal and we're gonna go get it. Yeah. And that's what, if, if that's gonna show up in here, that's good. Cause that's, that's where it has to be for this to be effective for everyone to rally around it. What, what, what I, I, agree, I, might... I think we have that up here to some degree, but now we need to break it down into, because I do think that is the loftiest of goal to ensure all students have the necessary right. skills, but now we need to break it down into that, that's waypoints. That's not a goal. That's, that's a vision. It, there's, nothing, I, there's no meat in there. There's no, I can't tell if we're getting there well, or not. And well, that's you, what I'm you, saying. You need to have the, the next, so if we're at 60%, What's right, the goal right. for next year? 65, right. 70, 75, whatever that right is, on. until we get to the ultimate goal of all. The other, the other point that I think we talked about in our planning stages was a sense of what are you prioritizing? And, and maybe that's achieved by virtue of the dates that you've set for it, but I suspect dates are also a function of when you think you can get it done as opposed to whether or not it's the most important thing you're doing. How are you, ad how are you addressing prioritizing what you're doing or is it we're just going to do everything that's listed here? Well, I think we have a priority based on 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 these dates or the not the dates but the the uh, the season and, and the year. But the reality is, we do work on most of these things. I mean, we do have a large enough staff. We do have folk, people focused on uh, uh, you know on those five goal areas. There are individuals focused on each one. <laughs> I don't know. I'll be honest. From my point of view, when the board set the five goals and we work from that point not clear that we don't see those as being totally intermeshed that one support one the work of one supports the work of the others right. we didn't clearly hear a prioritization necessarily in these five goals only to the extent that we i think several of us made the comment that we want to know what you're going to dates are important i mean and those that because a measurable uh, variable but what 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 is the most what's the most important thing you're going to do? What are the two or three things you know mm -hmm. you're going to put your time on? I know I know at least a few of us mentioned it, and maybe it's reflected in the dates. I'm just asking, what thought have you given to prioritizing it? Well, <clears throat> arguably you would <clears throat> you may not do it in the dates, but you may do it in the order in which they appear as action steps, <clears throat> and that that's sure. the level where we defer to all of you right. to say we, which are the right. which ones which are the drive the key drivers I mean I understand all those are important enough because they land in this document but perhaps that's how you that's how you you reflect a relative importance order. or priority is the order in which they appear there sure well in the order in which they appear, I mean within each one there's there's the next <coughs> step and and the the timeline for that so what are those steps or how are we prioritizing those steps? We talked a long time about how much of this information the board really wanted access to. We do feel that that's our work, that that's, that this is the, the operational plan, uh, but we didn't want to come in and just say, we're, so we did, we did certainly not list everything that we do, but everything that we list we will do. Uh, so we, we, try, we really walked a fine line between getting too operational versus uh, strategic. But I, I understand what you're asking for here, and that, and that makes sense. And we can add that to all of our areas in a, in a pretty, uh, I would think maybe we'll take a shot at it initially, but then bring it through the appropriate subcommittees to sort of get that, that goal out there to, to the board and, and add it to this document. Without it, I don't, I don't know what we have. Well, I think we've got a good roadmap for how we try to get to, to all students have necessary skills and we're going to do these things to get there. What we don't have is a roadmap that tells us, you know, if we're going from here to Des Moines, we don't know when we got to Iowa City and when we got to Newton. You know, we, we just know. know we're going, well, okay, we, yep. So we, we need to know, we know where we're going, yep. but we need to know pace. when we've made pace and specific pro yep. pro uh, progress. Mm -hmm. Part of, as Ed would bring this, I mean, your expectations about what we want the community to see what you want to see. I think we we struggle with. I mean, as you look at um, Mike, I mean this from the conversation, we actually have included, and it is possible as you go through, we have samples of well, what do you mean by that? 
What, what is that? What are you expecting people to do? That's a level of detail that probably might not be a conversation at the board level, but is there a teacher, is there a community member, is there a parent who says, well, I want to know what the expectations are for language arts in, in that case you saw, you happen to see, I think, a kindergarten language arts learning continuum based on the new Common Core. Um, so, you know, do we want that kind of thing? I guess we'll wait for your feedback to let us know, but for example, we thought there is a, a plan which outlines in detail these three items that can be attached. Want it, don't want it, ever look at it, not look at it. It's just how much transparency do we want with the community? Right. We certainly have so much data that we could, you know, we, our, our, my goal was to have big picture, the, how are we going to, you know, the intermediate picture, but also give somebody who might be interested, and maybe it's five people in the community, maybe it's 500, it probably depends on what that specific thing is, uh, goal is to, to, to dig in and look at that, uh, that level of data. Not that that's what, what the board ultimately wants us to report out on. They want to know, are we making an improvement in reading, math, and science, where we're, you know, yeah. whatever it is that we're assessing. But at the same time, since we have that process by which we think we'll improve that, we thought it makes sense to, to tag it on here because somebody might be willing to or wanting to go in and look at that. Might be a staff member or might be, you know, just seemed like an opportunity for us to be as, as transparent as possible because this, we're on the student achievement piece, but we're going to talk later about finances. We're going to talk, uh, you know, about a variety of other things. And so, some of you might be interested in the, in the school finances, and so a lot of that data we've now made available to them that hasn't been made available in the past. Mm -hmm. We need to, to look at the goal piece that, that Tom brought up and, and make sure that that's, somebody can look at this and say, where are you at today and where are you get, gonna be at a year from now, where are you gonna be at five years from now? Um, and then we'll put the underlying uh, resources that prove where we're, where we're at and where we're going so that we're not, you know, so that there's some some foundation or support for that information. I think if you've got the detail available and you've got sure. it in a format that can be presented to the public, why would you Maybe not either. make it available? Right. I mean, that's our th then <laughs> exactly as you explained before, you can go as deep as you want to go, and that way you've got something a parent can go back to a teacher and say, you know, if this is the score of my student of my child, you know, and I want to help my my child get up. Can I work on these? Can I work with this? That you can dig into it deeper as a parent looking at it. So you would want to give as much. I think this is good, but I, I also understand where Tom is yeah. coming from well, too. Well, it's easy to add. That's good feedback. I mean, it's easy for us to find a way, whether it's in here or just below here. But so, to what extent are third graders, sixth graders, and, and eleventh graders proficient in reading and math? Well, where are they in, in third grade in math today? And where do we need them to be in a year and in two years and in five years until we get to the And are we basing all. it just on the, the core? I mean, can our aspirations be higher and better than the, everybody well, else? <laughs> it can be. The core is extremely rigorous. Okay. I think that in the next years we are going to be extremely challenged meeting the expectations of the core. Okay. I'll be happy to take us as a district beyond that once we hit that number that gets determined, but I think we have yet to see the unveiling of the core to the students and the expectations around it. Just one quick comment. I, 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 there's, a, there's a fair amount of jargon in here for the uninitiated and maybe a glossary of terms on the front of this to define right. um, some of the things for the average reader um, or just, you know, when you saying things like uh, cohort, you know, we know what that means. There are people who might read this don't know what that sure. means. It just might be a, an easier way for people to digest some of the information that's here. So how, how are we going to determine those, those measurable deadline items, and when, are they, when is that going to be done? Well, that's, I mean, we can do it in the next several days, Good. or we can use the subcommittee, so, or we stop. can use the subcommittee <laughs> process and give the board input on that. Personally, I'd rather see a draft from staff because they're the ones that really know what the heck. I do think, yeah, I, I do too. And, but I do think it should come from. There should be that discussion at the committee level, and then that recommendation come back to the board because you know we're not all necessarily sitting on all those sure. committees. But I think it needs to start with staff, 
but have some, you know, at least at those committee levels, have that board input and then bring it back up. I, that shouldn't take every, the every risk, committee's going to move. At the risk of sounding like a cynic, I've, I've seen us talk in the past about these kinds of concrete um, deliverables that never seem to bubble up. And I just so they show up at some point. Absolutely, and I, I would agree. I've I've lived that life too, Tom. But I've never seen a document that takes it to this level. And so, if there's additional information that you need to see, we'll absolutely provide. I, it I would go as far as to say, this if if everybody likes the document, that's great. All I care about are is the is part that that's that messy. Piece? Is the part that says exactly <coughs> what things are going to look like when we are successful. That's all I care about. The other stuff, personally, that's great. Just give me the test scores, or give me the participation rate, or give me the give me the ultimate budget number. Give me those outcomes. All the other stuff that that should be owned by you folks because you don't you don't need a financial advisor mucking that up because you guys you guys know how to get that stuff done. But so good. looking at our, the questions, Mike, if you could go back. I'm then we can do as requested. I also agree with the idea, and um, actually before this meeting, is there seems to be for the main question, to what extent our third, fourth, and 11th grade, or sixth, 11th graders, is that there needs to be a summary statement. And that, that just wasn't, well, first of all, all that data isn't complete. <laughs> so I can't, we can't create that summary statement. But um, for a community member or a board member that doesn't care to delve into those, they should have be able to go to one place to say yes, no, improvement, whatever, whatever that statement is. So I think there is a piece that, that's missing there. Um, the other two bullets, which we can look at if you like, are simply ways to look at the data that answer, do our students meet a year or more of growth? And the third one, which is when you look at the four quartiles, zero to 25%, whether we talk about map, this, these questions are also designed to align to not just the Iowa test because there have to be multiple measures that these questions can be aligned to the MAP test or the ACT test or to the new Smarter Balance test which is coming our way, <laughs> so on and so forth. So these were designed to help us triangulate numbers, different kinds of data from different sources. Um, so the last question deals with quartiles. At, and we have created some basic templates for the schools to start to look at. I'd like to point out that none of these three questions deal with no child left behind trajectories or the 41st percentile, which has been something of a question that we have spent a lot of time on. And clearly, um, the board has indicated, <coughs> like, this is important for us to know, but we don't think this is the only measure that we want to know about our students. So in fact, the first three don't even touch um, Sina, Dina, any of that business. This next question, which we are currently collecting baseline data on, deals with college and career question. Are they ready once they graduate? And we have, a num we have certainly one piece of data that has been added to the new Iowa test, which says starting in eighth grade, is your child college and career ready in reading math and science? So every single year, a parent receives that data, answers that question, and so we will collect that data by grade level and by school. But it isn't available to me unbelievably enough technologically. So that's just a parent reported um, yes. uh, data point, not, it's not based on anything we're assessing? It's based on what we're assessing, but the, re the information is reported to the parents on their, um, on the materials that get sent home to you. I can't gather it, like we get a CD with all of the data of everything else but that on it for reasons we I get don't those quite now, know. Don't we? Don't we get a and I just, I just saw something yes. that said, you get it, I don't. College ready for yep. math. But the parent gets it, the you get it. district doesn't get it. Yeah, the only way we do it is we actually have hand counted it like yeah. this. <laughs> and the schools are getting me that data. I think there are other data points. ACT is a good data point for this particular question, as well as AP data. And so yeah, we'll sure. be collecting that, aggregating it, and then giving you the answer to that so question. And the, and the key to that data is I don't know why it is. Off. I've asked Kathy Welch from Iowa Test. I don't know why they don't do it. So it sounds like the key to that data, though, anything that we're going to choose, we need to have. So what does that mean? So right. if we're going to report the ACT, we should have an ACT goal. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
so we, we're going to want to be careful. I mean, where we were at initially of, of wanting to, to link to everything, we'll want to be specific about those things in which we have a goal because there are some things that, quite honestly, you know, some of the notes I left behind data, you know, well, we're going to focus our work yeah, elsewhere. That's the last question, which does have a goal. I mean, 80, at this point, it's different for different grades, but approximately 86% of all kids have to be at the 41st percentile. The, so that goal that's set. That's the note I left behind. Yes. Yeah, it's a goal set for us, not a goal right. we choose. But if we ask our staff what, if, 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 they're, you know, if they're aware of that's what the goal is, would what percentage would be able to tell us that? Um, I don't know if they can give you, like, just like right now, because it's different in reading and math, different in different grades. But I think, I think a fair majority of the yeah. staff, because of Sinodyna regulations and the fact of the sanctions that are that. coming they our know, way, are well yeah. aware that For there are trajectories. Yeah. For no child left behind, they do. So sure. if I walk across the street tomorrow and hit Roosevelt and Carver and say we need to be at 86 percentile, I'm going to get a vast majority of teachers they're going to know that it's 86 percentile? I think that they'll know, if they don't know the exact number because it changes from year to year, it went oh. up 10 percentage points from last year to this year, and but they do know that there is a trajectory, they do know what last year's trajectory was. I feel fairly confident that many teachers could tell you that. Okay. I mean we have five schools facing sanctions right. because they're not meeting that. So. Um, anyway, so that, those are our data points um, with regard to this. I think um, if we could look at page two that deals with uh, problem solving, because that's the inter integration with the technology, is in, on page two, our main goal on um, creating problem-based learning to create that 21st century learner is one area where we're integrating technology, instruction, and um, teaching strategies. And so um, Ron's going to talk a little bit about the technology that um, we have talked about integrating into yep. this particular goal. So let me, let me jump in here first. So we have some very specific goals that we've developed. We haven't had a chance. That's happened in the last couple of weeks. We're not prepared to share those goals today because they cost a lot of money. And we're going to take those two support services first and figure out where we're at uh, as far as the uh, one cent sales tax. And so Ron's prepared to talk about the current state, and we are prepared to talk about where we'd like to be next year, the following year, and the next. So in some of those areas, we've developed that, but we wanted to bring it through uh, the appropriate subcommittees before we get to that point. So uh, anyone cut, take your thunder away there, Ron? Uh, yeah, the idea is to first of all build a plan like you had described. We have that plan. Uh, we're working on it now. It's actually uh, solidifying. It looks good uh, as we go through it. Uh, there's, we're developing a lot of excitement in, on our team to be able to present that to you. And of course, the goal in this case here under this objective would be to get as much technology in front of the students as we possibly can. And part of that is that we're, we're short on computers that are out there right now. We have some data out there that shows that we are way under fired when it comes to technology, especially in the middle school and high school. So that really concerns us. Uh, the plan that we have is going to put computers, computer terminology, uh, terminals out there in front of the kids. Uh, and that's another thing too, the plan includes not just what we've always done, but it's going to include more of what the future holds for technology uh, in the classroom. We've done a lot of research. I know I've, I'm constantly on the uh, doing research about what technology is coming up so that we can prepare for that. And uh, we're focusing our attention on that so that's kind of an advantage for us to be able to be in the situation we are because now we're almost like we're starting from scratch in some cases. And be, but doing that, we're able to bring in some very economical uh, solutions to this uh, goal of getting computer technology to the kids. So, the uh, one of the things that I was going to mention too is, uh, besides bringing the uh, uh, the computers to the kids, we're also going to give them some cloud-based services, as you see here, uh, second from the bottom there. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, right. I can't use this. I'm colorblind to red. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, but uh, uh, at the second to the bottom right there, creating a partnership with Office 365 to provide cloud-based access to district technology uh, that can be safely managed by the teachers. So for example, what this does, uh, this is technology that a lot of schools aren't able to get to right now, or some of them are. 
I just came back from the UEN uh, uh, IT directors uh, meeting a couple weeks ago, and I think uh, three of those schools are using Office 365, which is a uh, cloud-based uh, service where the students can actually put all of their homework, all of their assignments, whatever data they want to put up there into this cloud, and wherever they go to access that, they can... Uh, uh, they can access it and the applications that it takes to use that data and to manipulate it too f to their advantage and whatever they intend to do. So that's one of our goals. Uh, we plan to actually, we're uh, migrating a portion of the district over to that right now, but we plan to be completely done with that next year at this time. It's a big uh, undertaking for the kids and it, there's a lot of a lot of these goals here, the reason why they can't be done just now is because there's a lot of professional development that needs to go with that or else we're going to uh, uh, not be able to deploy it like we intended. And so you'll see on, on where we're at now and next steps is is to refinalize and final, refine and finalize that plan, which we are hopeful to have done in the next, by the end of the week, quite I honestly. Think so. And then once that plan is, is approved, then the next step is to implement that plan here. So this one's an example, Tom, of a very specific, um, where are we today, how, is, how are we gonna look different, be different for students, for staff, um, a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. So I, I think that's a great point, and I think we've got that built in in a lot of areas. It, it maybe isn't as specific as it should be, but we can uh, make those changes and put it out there so that somebody can say, okay, in, in uh, the spring of 13, this is where we were, and this is where we're headed for the spring of 14 and 15, and then it's pretty easy to track whether we got there or not. Some things are easier to control than others, but I, I, it's a good point. One last thing that we could do, I wanted to show you is uh, uh, one of the, you're going to see this coming up in the subcommittee next week where I'm going to propose that we uh, in, change our Microsoft agreement. They have another uh, feature called the IT Academy. It's the last on the, on the list there as far as things we need to do. Uh, the IT Academy gives us all of the certified curriculum from Microsoft to help even teach the kids in a classroom environment how to get involved in technology. Uh, this is a good program because it will get our kids career ready uh, while they're in high school. I've talked to others who are doing this too and there are kids that are certified as uh, technical engineers when they graduate from high school. I'm going to look at those if I'm a, a business owner, I'm going to be hiring people that have already seen that so I don't have to train them. And it's not just the, the really deep technical side, we're talking about application certifications too. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that and I'd like to see a lot more development go behind that. As you can see, we've got that goal out quite a ways because it's, uh, we've got a lot of development here. So. Okay, that's about all I got there. Great, well let's keep uh, on the, moving on and, yep, sure. On student development, um, this, this really did prove, I mean, going back to that hard data and being able to measure what it is that you're talking about is, this is much more of a challenging one. So we have um, focused on um, three questions. The first one deals with, uh, you can't see our framework um, behind the screen, but it deals with, um, our 21st century skills, which includes those performance measures or performance character that we've talked about in the past, persistence, the ability to um, see a project through from beginning to end, collaborative working skills with team members, that kind of thing. Um, and that we will have baseline data at the end of this year with our work with um, L advanced learning partnerships, um, who is working with our administrators, instructional coaches on measuring those pieces. And as you look at the action plan, and also um, those pieces that would be incorporated into progress reports um, will be worked on this spring and incorporated into this spring. The second question, or for next fall, this spring for next fall. Um, the second question deals with um, the statements that dealt with activities. And so we are doing two things with activities, the first, second question and the third. 
The second question deals with the health of our students, and so we're working on four indicators that came from the National Science Academy that was just published this past December. That there are four areas that healthy students that have healthy outcomes exhibit, and we have um, we had some of those performance measures that we were able to work on, primarily cardiorespiratory uh, respiratory endurance. But now we're put. Um, Amy is working with the physical education department to work with PACER data and um, another program that will measure all four of those areas so that we can get, get a baseline on the health outcomes of our students. And then the second one though is, if they're healthy, are they participating in activities? And so um, we have, in this case as well, just some beginning data. This is data I work on with Cheryl and with Amy each year mm -hmm. as we mm -hmm. talk about their programs. So Mike, if you click on that, this is data that I think needs to um, continue to evolve a little bit. Um, so if we look at middle school participation in athletics for last year, this is information. Um, it's not complete. I mean, if the purpose that I was using it with a curriculum coordinator in terms of improving the program, who's going out, who's not going out, is a different kind of conversation than when you're reporting out to the community. I mean, if I'm looking at this from a community <coughs> aspect, I think that this data needs to be revised in a way that gives a more complete picture. For example, I, of my eighth graders going out for football for our middle schools, our three middle schools, the question is, well, what's that representative of the total number of eighth graders who could go out for football or fill in the blank for a particular uh, sport? The same is true to make sure that we are being inclusive as our policies call us to is what are the percentage of students with disabilities and or minority students who are participating in our programs. That doesn't, the number, the raw number itself doesn't tell you as much as if you um, reformatted the data to be more public friendly. That's not why this was created to begin with, but we thought this is a good point to demonstrate to the board the power of the kind of data that we can put in to talk about whether we're moving forward on the annual report or on this particular question or not. So we'll be taking this data. <clears throat> and this is what I'm hearing that the, the, the board would like to see. We'll be taking that data and making, uh, setting a more concrete goal in saying this is how we want to move the dial this year. So you, what, you, what you saw there was last year's data because the, the year was finished, right? And so mm -hmm. then we'll look at this year's and then we'll make a goal for next year. How do we grow that number? How do we grow the number, total number or percentage of students participating in sports, total number of students with disabilities, total number of, of minority <coughs> students participating in that happened to be athletics, but it could be co-curricular activities. Mike, if you could to the middle school um, gifted and talented. For example, we track in the five areas of what is considered by law what we must, must offer in talented and gifted. So this happens to be middle school those the, on the far left-hand side of the five areas. And so then you just see raw numbers um, for the three schools. Again, this is interesting in, in one context as I work with schools and or the talented and gifted coordinator, but it really needs to have a longitudinal feel. We should need to, the public needs to see the trend right. year over year, and um, it needs to be reformatted. But for this meeting, it, we just wanted to give you the vision of where we thought we could go with the data. Do all other non-athletic activities fall under talented and gifted category? Well, for the, um, I would say we'd have to look at that to make sure that we are accounting for, but if you scroll, Mike, if you scroll, the bigger piece of activities that are not athletic tend to fall under the visual and performing arts, and we do track that. But it, but the debate team, um, and is that just because that's where funding for it comes from out of that? I, I guess when I look at it, it, talented and gifted has always been grouped into one big lump sum. It's going to be, it's, it's these activities that are happening, but it's also considered like in elementary school, it was the programming that was done, that was the extra math that we were trying to get. Yeah. And to me, it's like, just to understand it better, I think I understand it better from being on the board now that it just encompasses every activity. That's not athletic, just about. 
I mean, because it says under talented and gifted. You only have athletic and talented and gifted. I would think of it to be you have athletics and <coughs> I do non-athletic or club or yes. activity or what I don't know the word for it but well and and I would agree with you I think that being called to this we would want to look at what all the high schools for example have an extreme extremely well developed club culture of different types of activities that are not falling or being counted in this piece and we would need to to answer the question, which is to what extent do all students participate in co and extracurricular activities, we would need to expand it. But if you ask me what's the data that I have today, in an effort just to say to the board, look at what we can start to report, this is all I have today. I have never collected data from the high schools on the club participation, um, that kind of thing. I so guess, we would need to be more expansive. As and making this, this available for the public to do it, for somebody who doesn't understand the education program, anybody hears of TAG, if you've grown up in the olden, back when we were in school, TAG kids were only the kids that were asked to participate in these types of programs because of certain abilities. But that's not true, it's open to everybody. The word, the, 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 the language of talented and gifted, I think cuts people off. And, and that vision means it's only for those can do better, that are, that are above and beyond. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think the terminology of how we report it out of, of what are these activities that are available, um, we understand it because we, we know where the data is coming from. But I, you know, if you don't know, it's like, well, my, my child's not considered a talented and gifted student in, in the classroom, so they really don't qualify for any of these things. So, you know, it's the way we present it to the public. Right, I, I agree with you. And, there, and there's a lot of stuff up there. It's a lot of stuff that that John that John Q average kid can participate in. So to claim that those are open activity areas, to me misses the mark a little bit. I mean, when I think of activities, I think of an activity that like Model UN that any kid can be a part of if they choose to. They self-select, but not every kid can be a part of. I don't. I think is it Math Counts or Math Olympiads is specifically a talented and gifted program. It is off. I, I'd have to say that I am not sure how the schools offer it for Math Olympia. Okay. The one that I know that not you just can't say I want in is the the most advanced mathematicians program. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would have to say that I would have to go back and check that it. I think it is a little bit uh, unless oh, math, language arts honors, for example, you can't say I want in necessarily. Mm -hmm. You have to meet criteria. But many of the activities, especially in the general intellectual, the leadership, the creative thinking, and the visual performing arts is, if you want it, you can have it. Because we look at talent development just as importantly as we do the gifted, the gifted piece of mm -hmm. programming for all kids. When we're funded for talented and gifted, I don't get dollars just for kids who get identified. We get a dollar amount for every single child in this district, and they should each have access to that to some degree. Can I make a, yeah. And from an activities council standpoint, <clears throat> I'm hoping that that's going to be one of the areas that we address. Because if I'm a kid that, that is struggling to hang on, I'm not a joiner, I'm not the kid who's, I'm the kid that, that really needs an activity. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I find something on that menu that hits the mark for me. And maybe that's beyond the scope of this discussion. But that's the kind of stuff that I think we need to measure and we need to make sure that there's offerings out there. We assume that football, wrestling, <coughs> basketball, and track is what all seventh grade boys at Roosevelt or Jefferson or Washington, that that is going to be one of their things. And it might not be. So it, it might be something completely different. It might well, be the NASCAR club. Yeah. When I look at these participation, that conversation at the end of the year would be, why, why is this number whatever it is? It's so high, do we need to up the ante because it's gathering student interest? Why is the number so low? Well, Are we not reaching out, so on and so forth? That was the purpose of this form. Right. As it morphs for your purposes, we can, we can redo it, but I And Mike, if you go back to the action steps for this one, keep going back, and go down to, um, 
So here's what we're talking about next steps, Tom, where it talks about surveying students for co extracurricular students, what they're interested in, and then recommend um, revised uh, co extracurricular program as per data from student survey program. So a lot of those things are in those next Perfect. steps. We're just right. not there yet. Perfect. One of the things we want to make sure we're looking at is not total number of participants, but total number of individual participants, because if, if I'm in one event and Mike's in five events, we don't count That's as right. six, we count as two. Right. <laughs> so how do we, you know, how do we make sure that all kids are involved? So a lot of those things you'll see in here, um, and again, we'll have to put together that data as, as we get it, how many individuals are involved, and then I guess set some goals about how are we getting to well, improving that number. In some cases, we have to build the data collection system. And then, that's right. In some, in some cases, especially in most, when you're disaggregating by, I'm in, in five, but another person's in yep. one. In many right. cases, <laughs> that'll be the situation. We don't have an infrastructure because in the, you know, history of the district, or in most districts, that hasn't been. So that's why, in a lot of these things, next steps are. You know, there's not any data available currently. The next steps are uh, uh, looking for that data in, in Mike's area with the school community relations, certainly. But that's why we want these next steps in there so that people can see exactly the question you're asking. What are we going to do to find out what kids want and how is that different? Our, our activities, athletics, haven't changed in a long time, as most districts have. So we're saying we're going to ask that question and we're going to develop some type of a response to try and draw more students I think in the that. data that was reported, I think if you just put a qualifier in on some of those that say, you know, like where the numbers seem lower, it's because they do need to be um, either qualified for or invited <laughs> into as opposed to like uh, VPA is open to all students. Mm -hmm. I think if that is kind of, if it's defined a little bit more clearer for people to see, then it's better understood as to, you know, that's why there's only a small amount of, you know, students in this grouping, yet we do have a lot of students in the LEAP program because it's open or whatever, it's open to more students than others. When we look at this, we'll look at it in terms of the public looking at it. That was not the point of this right. when it was yeah. created. Right. No, I understood. Mike, just a quick comment. Um, obviously the context of this conversation is how we best aggregate information and report it out in the aggregate. But I, it makes me wonder, given all the, the advances in technology, the, abil the ability of, to create a portfolio for a student and really track a student over time, are we getting closer to a point where we can actually create individual learning plans that, you know, right now with the, with the special needs kids, we have IEPs. And I know we've talked as a board about having individualized plans where some of these opportunities that we talk about are presented to the child, not simply waiting for them to come and ask. I just wonder, and again, it's off topic to some degree, but I just wonder as a theme or as a goal to get further down that road towards utilizing technology to create these profiles, these, uh, uh, containers, if you will, of information about an individual student that presents these opportunities to them. Uh, to a degree, we do have I Have a Plan Iowa, which is required for every eighth grader through their graduation to um, work on. I'm, it's at how far up have we come since it's been implemented? We should be through the high schools, but technology is holding us back because each student needs to do it from Right now, every eighth grader has a plan by the end of the year and it's documented, but the I Have a Plan Iowa has like surveys and they have many levels. It takes about four to five class periods for a student to work through all of the programming that's within that. And then at the end, what they do is plan out their four-year schedule according to a career or an interest area. And right now at the high school level, the state has recommended that all of our grade nine through 12 students complete that plan. And our counselors and uh, career technology, our business teachers, and many other teachers are working hard to get there. But what happens is when we need a group of students to go into a computer lab to be able to complete that, and mind you, it's a whole week that we wipe a class out. That means some class is dispelled from their class content and have to go somewhere else. So until our technology can support more computers for kids, 
kids. We are struggling to get that done. But um, this year we're doing a mailing campaign and we mailed out information in the fall. We are going to be doing that again shortly. So we're really making the effort to get there. And probably within the next, I would say, two to three years, we should be there where every student not only develops the plan in eighth grade, but has it checked annually with more interest in Mentori's career exploration and firmer course schedules in terms of here are the classes I need to complete before I graduate to be career and college ready. That sense of ownership that, that that breeds with a student to know that they're in control of their future I think is really, really important. Does that inventory also show what the school has available? I should know this, but I don't. Um, what Does the inventory show other extracurricular activities that would support that plan of interest? Not necessarily extracurricular activities, but we have entered in all of the classes that we offer at Senior and Hempstead. So certainly the students, when they do their career inventory, can go in and align the classes that we offer to the classes that they will need in order to attain some type of post-secondary <coughs> education. One of the things that is expressed, and I'm not remembering if it's ninth grade or 10th grade, it's somewhere in the early high school years, where they do emphasize that students need to be well-rounded, that to go to college, it's not just the book smart, but they need to be joining extracurricular clubs and activities. So it is in there, but it doesn't talk specific. It mentioned things like if you're interested in being um, a veterinarian or a doctor, you might want to join Explorer Post in your community. It does do general things of that type. It'd be nice if we could tie in, though, all of the co-curricular and extracurricular <coughs> activities well, and be presented to that student I as alternatives. The high school transcripts, there is a function in there that shows activities and clubs that the high school kids are participating. I don't think it goes down to the middle and elementary, but as a parent, looking back, it would be nice to have that. It's nice to look at that portfolio, at least in high school, it'd be nice to look at that back to yeah, elementary and middle school. I think we're missing, we're, that's after the fact. I think we want to look at these individual, if we go to the individualized learning plan, we're starting it back in when these kids are in, introduced to extra grade, before eighth grade even. Back, you know, when they're starting sixth grade, if if you want to do it at eighth grade and that's what their career goals are, what does my school have to offer that's going to do that? If we find out that our students are having all these career goals that we're as a school aren't offering, we need to go back and look at what we're offering our students. I think that's where we don't, we, I, the end result is meaningless. We want to get it to where it is at the beginning so we can catch all those and look at what we're offering. Make sure the activities that we're offering meet the needs of what and the our career students are doing. The horizon is laudable, but I mean, I'm 52 years old and I still don't want to do when I grow up. So the idea that a student in eighth grade is going to know what their exact career path is, no, but if they can know, hey, I have this opportunity, I got a chess club, I got all these other clubs. Try it. That's what we want to get them involved in. Right. That's what makes them a well-rounded student, not the fact that they really know right now that they want to be, you know, a CEO. Well, and to the extent we can know, those kids can know what they, those opportunities are at an early age. We can track what they're in through an individualized transcript, both as far as clubs and as far as these certifications. There's a hundred certifications that kids can earn, swimming, Swim, lifeguard, uh, uh, jet ski, Microsoft, whatever, and to track those certifications and clubs and some kind of transcript, that then gives you, would give you the data that you need in an organized manner, and the kids would have that data for their own transcripts, and it would provide a mechanism so kids at an early age could see in advance what's available to them, and it would help counselors guide those kids into what are all the opportunities both within our schools in clubs or with outside of our schools with certifications that might be available to them to get to the point where they're 21st century. Our members. district should have an individual learning plan for every kid in this district. But and and then that's the goal. Right. How we get there is... But to Tom's point too, he said, you know, a NASCAR club. You know, why can't we... Everything is so career and, and college oriented for kids. It's like, let's let them find something. Maybe they what they think they're going to do, let's... Off, see what they're interested in for you know just to keep them busy at school if they're not that driven you know something that'll get their interest and then that light bulb might go off with those kids to say oh what could this lead me to you know and then it would go further I think I think we're all <coughs> saying what we're 
hoping to see, but and it's getting there. It's just not quite. Sure. We're asking well, for way more than is it, time is available. I well, understand and that. And that I think goes back to to Tammy. Why I think these are great discussions. We we have a lot of board meetings where we pay bills and those sorts of things, and it's it is it quite honestly it's refreshing to have educationally based board meetings from time to time. And so if we could have, as we move forward time, significant time to talk about at this level these individual goals for, you know, again, by yeah. having those, indiv you know, one meeting focused on one, one meeting focused on two, or a combination, either one is fine, but to, to have this opportunity to have this discussion, I think it's great. Well, I like the fact if we do that, it's going to be a conversation that funnels into a focused outcome. Absolutely. Because, you know, we, we've had these meetings, we, you and I have been at them, where you just sat around the room in the instructional meeting, and two hours later you had a great conversation about whatever it might be, but there's no real where we going direction from there. This, is, we this is the nice thing about sure. this. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Mike, I think you're up. So with that, we'll move into the community movement section. And this is a, a good example, as Stan and others have mentioned, of an area where really there is no baseline data. And so much of the early work is focused around how do we determine the mechanism by which we get that um, baseline. So if you look at the three questions um, in terms of what we'll look to um, assess and what those indicators are for community engagement, the first one being to what extent are community members confident about the work of the district. The second, looking at the parent piece, to what extent are parents engaged in the education of their children and in our schools? And the third being, to what extent is the district involved in meaningful business and civic partnerships? So again, um, really for all three of these questions, there's a significant data collection piece that will have to happen next. And so as you look at that first piece, um, we're in the process now of looking at um, some examples of what other districts have done to gauge this data, looking at research options, options. Um, how do we get that input, and then also that the secondary piece and the confidence is what Tom mentioned earlier about an the anecdotal piece and looking at some ways to get not just hard statistical data, but how does the anecdotal piece fit into that? So we'll talk about that in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, the parent engagement piece. Um, Lynn came across and, and passed along some information about a new survey tool that's out there that was developed in partnership with SurveyMonkey and the Harvard School of Education. So right now we're looking at that tool and how we might implement that, modify it, how does that fit into helping us, again, get some baseline data on parent engagement. Um, and again, parent engagement is a twofold piece. There's the, there's the statistical information about the number of parents involved. Um, but there's another piece about the, the meaningful involvement <laughs> as we talk about how in-depth does that get, how does it go to the next level. And so we'll do some work to try to gather the statistical information just about involvement, but then also look at that additional piece that will hopefully really help us delve into how meaningful is it and how is it based on some theory and some hard um, some hard information behind it to help us kind of baseline that. Um, and the third piece being uh, business, civ business and civic partnerships. Again, um, these happen across the district, as, we, as we've said before, but there's been no mechanism by which we actually gather that information in a centralized location. And so in the short term, what you'll see is that um, our efforts in this area will really focus on collecting that baseline data. So in, for example, um, and I'll, I'll leave you to read the, the um, action steps there. One of the examples is you look at community members and their confidence and, and aside from the survey mechanism is we're planning to start um, a kind of a town hall format event that citizens can come and ask questions and get information from district administrators. We've tentatively called it school speak, um, but really if you look at um, the kind of cracker barrel, barrel format that our legislators use to give an opportunity for members of the public to come and engage with district administration in a way that maybe they haven't been able to before, um, and, and we're still really fleshing out the details of what that program will look like, but whether it starts with a topic focus and then opens up into questions or really gives people an opportunity to be engaged and for us to get feedback on a different level, um, again, speaks to that anecdotal piece that Tom mentioned so as well. So it's different than the public speaks at a board meeting because it wouldn't be part of a board meeting. It would be a Saturday morning or a Thursday night where, you know, uh, they could 
community members can come in and ask questions of the superintendent. <coughs> Maybe we'll start, as Mike said, with a 10 minute, 15 minute overview on a specific topic, technology or activities, you name it, hopefully focused on the strategic plan, but then it really opens up into a format of, of question and answer input session. Again, not so much with the board, but more at the administrative level with the superintendent and the whoever else would happen to be involved with that conversation. So again, to drive the idea of uh, open communications, two-way communications, we're listening as much as we're talking or more than we're talking, and then, you know, with the goal of uh, setting, scroll if you would Mike, um, the, to what extent, you know, there's a, there's a really concrete area where Tom, we could go back to your idea of, you know, what is that percentage and what's our goal and how do, what are our steps to make that better. But, so this is an area that we're, we're pretty excited about because I think it's got some real opportunity for us to, to draw in the, in the community and, and listen to, uh, I don't know if two people will show up or 200, but we'll find out. Well, if you went to a basketball game, there'd be <laughs> we'll plenty of people there at halftime. <laughs> a dollar <laughs> a question? If you go, if you go to where the people are at. A dollar a shoot, a half court. A dollar a question. Free popcorn up in the auditorium. <laughs> yeah. oh, I like that. Dude. You can ask a question sure if you hit the three-point shot. Basketball game, they Stunk want to hear from me. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like that. And again, as you, as you look at that, many of these points have kind of a, key part, a, a data heavy part or a, you know, a, a significant data piece and an anecdotal piece that um, even if you look at the business partnership piece that as you look at kind of action steps, some of the ongoing projects with the Aquatic Center project, the district is um, involved in the city's work to create a volunteer center which goes into the whole volunteer piece of how could that help us possibly track and recruit and maintain a volunteer base um, then to the data piece of how do we simply collect the information from across the district and provide some mechanism that people can tell us what those partnerships are and to what extent to give us some baseline for some specific measurement. Okay. Thank you, Mike. The next piece is effective resource management. If you look at the goal, <laughs> maximize and stream, streamline resources to provide increased access to the 21st century learning tools, and facilities, etc. Um, our goal here is to give you financial reports that are show the financial stability as well as the fiscal responsibility of the district and report that to the public. <laughs> what are we doing to support student achievement and student development? So several of the things that we've embedded in this document you've seen in the past and will continue to see annually. We'll report you know, at specific times of the year how our general fund, fund balance looks, unspent balance, et cetera. So you will see reports in the spring and the fall most likely that show where we are compared to our goals. And you've seen that before in other reports. We kind of have a where we're at compared to where we want to be. So we will continue with that. Also continue working on the 10-year uh, facilities plan. Where do we want to go with the dollars that we have from the one cent and the pebble dollars? So we will continue to develop that moving forward, looking at, OK, what was the last year's goals? Did What do we do? You know. Um, what were the things that we built, et cetera, remodeled, and then where are we going to go with the future dollars? So that will be adjusted every year depending on what we do and what we are able to accomplish, and we'll also show you what dollars are left. So we'll help formulate you know, what we're going to do in the future. Um, the one really new piece, and I'm going to let Ron talk about that, is the implementation of our IT plan. That is really something new that you haven't seen before, but I think it helps develop bringing technology to the students, bringing technology to the staff. What plan are we using to implement that? Right, and that's a plan that we'll bring forward at a subcommittee meeting shortly. Yeah, and there's not much more, it, and it, it just shows you how this is tied together with the uh, student achievement as well. Could you click on the, yeah, on the data gonna, that's here, Mike? I think there's some data for that. <coughs> what I wanted to show you here was the uh, the amount of technology that we've out, uh, extracted there from the, uh, the, works. the computer counts as well as the, yeah, right. 
<laughs> well, all of a sudden got real slow. <laughs> well, that makes the, the point. Do we need to get yeah, this tech yeah. plan done? We need more money. We need more resources. This is the time to ask right now. I like yeah. that, Tom. I think you're right. <laughs> Play the Why Jeopardy tune right now. There you go. I'm thinking that's about the case. So, uh, what, what we found uh, after doing some uh, surveys or scans of our network, we found that there's a lot of technology out there that's ancient. I think you know that. And a lot of old technology that hasn't been updated. But even then, in the last uh, few months, we've increased the amount of, uh, well, we've improved the versions of the operating systems that are out there. Uh, we had, I think, coming in, I think I saw 3,200 Windows 2000 boxes. <coughs> now we're getting close to 1,000. And the rest of them have been converted to Windows 7. So the kids can actually graduate seeing an operating system that's not 13 years old. And maybe if you click on it again, maybe it'll yeah. refresh. This is the point usually where my daughters yell, Dad, the internet ain't working. Yeah, the internet is down. Yeah. I'll plug the modem. But uh, here it comes, so yeah. maybe not. No. Okay. Come on, Dad. Okay. No. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So, uh, right here, you'll, you'll see. Yeah. It was behind it. Okay, so you can see here, uh, here's, uh, I've got it marked here in the red course. These are the ones we want to phase out. Uh, and then the blue is what, the ones we want to work on. This is what we've actually, this really shows a lot of progress over the last year or six months or so. If you could scroll down, Mike, to the, here's what I wanted to show you really. Uh, this is important here. Right now we have 2,700 full-size desktops. They're big enough you can park your car in there. Uh, we're getting rid of all that stuff and we're getting rid of, we're, we're trying to bring in cost-effective, energy-efficient uh, devices. I think Kevin likes that because it's going to save, I calculated <laughs> at one point in time, probably about $700,000 a year just to be in electricity to generate power for or to, to, or to power the computers. I'm not even talking about cooling them. But you'll notice there too, the uh, in the blue again, is where we're going to go. And you can see we're very far from it right now. Uh, but the tablets and the hybrid tablets, these are very uh, powerful, but yet cost effective uh, devices to bring in. I think you've seen the tablets already. and then. Uh, there's another one too, the thin client is going to allow us to virtualize the desktop so that we can control and manage the user's experience from the data center here with automated technology. So uh, it's going to, we're, we're, we're excited about this. So it gives you an idea. When we build this out, you're going to see a change not only to the computers per students down there, uh, you'll see that go near to one to one and eventually maybe so, who knows. Uh, that, that's a pretty misleading statistic right now, one to three, <laughs> because you have to bounce back up right. to how old that is right. and yeah, where that, it's located. That's the point. And, and I can tell you from my surveys that the, the teachers are just not encouraged to use the technology because it's so old. So, but that's what this whole plan is all about, is fixing this problem here. The endpoint computer access is at 4208 right now. Uh, the goals, you'll see when we start to implement our five-year tech plan, that you'll see closer to 10,000 machines. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll bring that forward at Support yeah. Services next. Yeah, so any well, questions? We have a, I mean, it almost makes sense to do with technology what we do with the buses where, you know, every 10 years well, you buy be 10 a, There'll be a refresh, yeah. refresh cycle yeah. of part of what we yeah. present, and, and that refresh cycle certainly won't be 10 years. That means no air it'll conditioning. Be, yeah. It'll be right. so <laughs> windows, no no auto. Auto. Do you, How do you roll down windows? Uh, 2010. <laughs> you throw it out. <laughs> the big the white. Well, then you will see that tech plan incorporated into the Pebble in one cent plan. Yeah, it's, it's it aggressive and it has a significant cost, so we'll, that's why we're going to bring it there first. And, and not all funding will come from that. You, we will try to show you here's the funding sources that we believe we will use for different pieces of those of that tech plan. Um, if you want to flip the page over, Craig, we've got that one little check that says, you know, we're done with that. Yeah, thanks for reliving that for me. <laughs> so as we have products or plans that come to an end, you will see the designation that says, yep, we're done with that piece. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> one down and many more to go. Okay, Rick, Nancy, and David, I think are going to...
for the tag team employee excellence. Quick start. I think you see Dave, they're going to jump in there, and then I'm going to finish up with full work. So, um, specifically, we're going to create an environment in which employees strive for excellence, collaborate as part of a team, and are confident and confident in supporting student learning. So, if we look down below, you'll see that all of these on this page are in yellow because. Stan turned this over to me Friday. That's the first time I had a chance to, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I did get in on the, on the back end of this. But some of the things that we are looking at doing, um, for example, centralized employee recruitment to hire high quality, best fit employees. That's something that we do, but we're going to refine that. We're going to get a little bit better at it because the current system, uh, what we do is we, we catch all these applicants online and then we just let the building principals weed through them, which isn't a big deal if you're a high school physics teacher because you might only have four applicants. But if you're looking at an elementary position, there might be 600. And so the process that we're going to take on in HR over the next year is to try and get that down so that we're going to go through that sort and sift and we're going to come up with the best qualified applicants and we're going to give that list to the principal so they don't have to do that because right now um, it, it is, it's a very cumbersome process for them in particular. So that's one of the things that we are going to do. We do collect employee retention data right now, and when I say that retention data, we, we actually do a process and we ask the anybody leaving the district to evaluate. And it's in a large Excel file which isn't usable for anything other than to look through and see why XYZ employee left at a particular time. So again, our goal would be to take that process, refine that, so we can tell you that 67% of the people leave because they retire or have moved out of the area. And that will help us, I think, improve what we do to make sure the employees are happy. Um, the evaluation system, I think the state is going to take care of. That's one of the things that will be restricted. That doesn't mean we won't try and make it better, but at the same time, we're going to be restricted with what we can do with regard to the state. So we're going to let them roll that out. And those that are going to Des Moines tomorrow, maybe you'll hear a little bit about that. I don't know. That's a, that's a constantly evolving system. Um, we do have mentoring opportunities for our administrators. Uh, all new administrators to the district currently, they, they actually do get mentored by somebody for the first year. But some of the things that we're trying to do is to cultivate that talent within our own district. And so we're, we, we have the UEN program, which allows all of the, I think we pay for three teachers a partial tuition credit to go through the UEN, UNI administrator program. And we're reaching out to those people and again, trying to cultivate our own talent here so that they can move into administrative positions within the district as well. You want to flip over to the next page? I'm going to let, you think David's going to talk? When you looked at and have more time to look at the first school about student achievement, you'll see a lot of the actions have to do with what we're doing with our staff. It's hard to separate employee excellence and student achievement. So this really takes you back full circle to the student achievement goal. But there are some specific things about professional development that we're very concerned about, and that's the, the quality of it and really moving it forward. And we know on the page that you're on, if you look at the action, it says enhanced job embedded teacher professional learning. So what we're really talking about here is moving, and we have been and will continue to move farther and farther away from those opportunities that are go to a conference and sit, which is one way to learn, or have the presenter come and give the motivational speech to the teachers. We're talking about having the teachers learn new things that they apply immediately back in their classroom, and then they come back again and talk about how that worked. It's all job embedded. It's all making the learning for the teachers relevant and very useful and very immediately useful with their students to find results. So what you see on this page are um, the present job embedded professional learning opportunities that we offer for various groups of teachers today. And some of these are very new things that we're doing. And we're just trying this professional development out to be very different than we've had in the past. So far, the evaluations from teachers are very positive. It's very much related to the work that they're specifically doing in the courses they're teaching or the classes that they, that they have. And so we're moving further and further along that line. So it's not the expert coming in and telling everybody what to do and then leaving and then we don't know where the results are. It's coming back again and again. So that's the way a lot of our professional development is designed today. And then at the bottom there, you can see further areas where we're moving in, in really trying to create that 
job embedded professional development. Now professional development isn't just ideas that suddenly pop into our head and wouldn't it be nice to do this. What you'll see there's a link there to the left, but it's also up on the whiteboard here, and that's the Iowa professional development model that we have been following, and it's the white and, and yellow chart that you can link to the same chart there. And it's a process and it's a model that we follow in order to improve student learning. And so you'll see particularly that ongoing component circle that's yellow, that's what we're talking about as being the ongoing job embedded portion of the professional development. I'll turn it back to Rick for the next part. One thing I did forget to mention, we are working on an employee wellness program, um, kind of getting that off the ground. We've talked to uh, uh, medical associates at this point and, and discussed that with them. Right now we're struggling with uh, motivating and, and how to go about getting the staff involved with that. There are some expenses associated with that. We think we could recoup those costs in three years, but uh, motivating the staff to, to jump on board with that because it really has to be driven by the staff as far as participation in a program like that. So on to the last page. Um, I know you're excited to get to that last page probably. Uh, currently we have paraprofessionals and they get uh, on the job training. That's what they do. They show up the first day of work, they're told exactly what they're going to do and that is the extent of their training. And we think we can do better. So our goal is to say that uh, um, by spring of 2013 we're going to get a plan in place um, where we're going to move those paraprofessionals new to the district are going to get some indoctrination. They're going to get some training up front and the people that have been here a while we're going to get them some training we think probably centered around behavior management because that seems to be the biggest area of concern when you're working with the students and that's the, the, the area that they're not trained in the most. That will probably again continue to evolve as we get better at that there might be some other things that we would jump into as well with regard to that. And I did talk about the, the support leadership opportunities and, and we talk about the, the UEN and the UNI program. Um, we've got several things that we do here in the district well and we're going to continue to evolve. So um, we'll continue to support and review and refine those leadership roles for the teachers and give them opportunities to move from the classroom if that's what they want to do and give them leadership opportunities. Sometimes <coughs> that isn't leaving the classroom. Sometimes those leadership opportunities happen within a building and that, that makes the building stronger as well. Okay. Well, so I guess in conclusion then, um, we've developed this format uh, as sort of an ongoing uh, link to our website uh, so that it's not just a reported out whatever time frame it is we agree to report out uh, our progress on this. Um, one of the things that I'm hearing pretty clearly is that, Mike, can you scroll down a little bit? That in the assessment, somewhere in here, whether it's below or underneath, somehow, and we'll, we'll work on the design of that, we'll embed more specifically where we are currently and we'll put some uh, sort of, uh, so there'll be a current state and then some sub goals, whether it be year to year um, or maybe a three or to five year plan that support the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal was, was decided by the board, but there need to be some sub goals so that we know we're making sustained continual progress towards that goal. So we're moving the dial. That's what I'm hearing uh, yeah. that the board really feels is, is a necessity and that, and that makes a lot of sense. We say, okay, if we're at, you know, 50% with sixth graders or whatever it is next year we're going to be at 52%, 54% on the way to that all students ultimate goal uh, at the top of the page. And just so I'm clear, clarify, <coughs> the staff is going to come up with the targeted numbers we'll and then you'll vet those through committees. We'll bring those through committees. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring those. But the staff will this. take the first. Yeah, we'll take the crap. first swing at that and then we will, that will give us a great uh, talking point for our Unless update meetings. We'll, we'll do that. I believe no. our next meeting, if, if we don't want to change the schedule, Monday. is in June. We might want to look at that. Uh, June's not always the best time to have two board meetings. We want to move it up to May or what, but we'll figure that scheduling piece out. Um, but between now and then through the subcommittees, we will put specific uh, uh, targets or goals um, that will help lead us to, to our ultimate goal in the, in the blue. I don't know if we're going to call them sub goals or what, but something so that there's a differentiation between the overall you know, goal. Uh, some areas very, you know, student achievement, um, the financial piece, the community engagement piece, 
Um, I think we can do those goals. Um, other ones we may have to be a little more creative with um, how we're going to track that data, but we'll bring something to the board. Um, starting with the subcommittees uh, in the next month, uh, and then ultimately as we add those to it, we'll report out again, as I said, in June, which is the next scheduled one, unless we want to change that uh, date and, and pull that forward. Well, it'd be, it'd be nice, and you tell me if it's not possible, but I mean, it, within a month, we're going to be, you know, we will have, unless you think that's too much, but, uh, you know, within a month, we should be through all the, the committees, right? Their next week, I think. I mean, what I, what I, you know, we sure. were joking okay. earlier, not joking, but we were saying, well, you could do it right now. Sure. And you say, you know, we he, could. he promised to have it done by six in the morning tomorrow when we, we leave. But, we, but I heard a few days. But yeah. I, I, I would, <laughs> and we can do them rapidly, yeah. but it's a matter of how much, you know. Well, personally, I would hate to wait until June. Sure. That's to say now we got off. the tangible, measurable goals embedded in our strategic plan. <laughs> I think inside of 30 days, we ought to be able to you know, no later than the April board meeting, be able to know that this thing, and understand it's, it's, it's dynamic, it's living, so this isn't just concrete in concrete. So we reserve the right to change it at any time, but for goodness sakes, let's get, let's get something on the board as best we can. We may learn things as you start to develop your data collection. We may start to learn things to say, hey, that, that, that's not what we want. And so that's when we should be through our Updates. Sure. I think that's where you test that and say, are we still watching the right thing? And, and, and what we expect is that still reasonable? And does sure. it really move the dial? But yeah, I, I so the, it's just a suggestion. But I think those those three that are up there under assessment are indicators, and what needs to come underneath them are simply measures. Right. Whether you label them that way or not, I think that's what we're looking for. If you can have three or four measures underneath each of the indicators, then I think you've sure. achieved what looking for. So the question is do we want to incorporate that into the normal April meeting or do we want to take that June meeting and, and add another one in April? It's more a matter of not our time to get the work done but the length of the meeting itself. I don't think it will take very I don't think it will take long. You've covered the majority of yeah. this that gets us started. I just think I, I, what you're missing is I'm fine either way. Is those are those detailed goals. You could layer those in and we that shouldn't take us long to get through that and then as we start to digest this and start to set up a schedule in June, we take our first swing at student achievement. And that's where we can peel the and onion the back and start we, to figure we out. we vet those through committee first before we bring it. Right. Yeah. But we should be able to do that in, in 30 days, oh, sure. shouldn't we? Well, there's actually two cycles. There'll be two committee cycles between now and the April meeting, so which is plenty of time. Yeah. <laughs> not, not the, you know. Yep. And I guess the other thing I heard was, uh, so kind of at the assessment level, or however you relabel that, you know, we need the, we need the tangible goals, the trend, whatever we're going to expect. But then at the, um, I heard at the action step level, to the extent that you can, do as we did the first run through. Pull out the, pull out the education, education speakies mm -hmm. as best you can. Some you can't, you can't avoid, I get that. Please. But, but to the extent that you can make that in layman's language, the better, and I think Craig's idea of a glossary or some kind of tool where you could open it up and, and you know, be able to understand maybe exactly what it means or the, the you know, what the basis is for it, I think that would be good. Sure. I think this document, I think what you presented to us is, it, it's really good. It gives us all the details mm -hmm. that we want. And I, as we were listening to, we went through community engagement, resource management, and employee excellence really quick because those are all easy to understand, easy goals to say, and it's like you can say, we either have money or we don't, and how are we spending it? And that's easy to understand. When it comes back up to two, student achievement and student development, I think we're asking that same thing. Sure. What is it that we want our kids to do? And, and you know, in a short amount of being able to visualize it, you know, it's harder for us to put that goal. It's, I, think it's, I think the resistance, I shouldn't say resistance, but to, ha to voice that lofty goal is the failure maybe or the, the expectation that we might not get there because our goals are so high. But we have to know that it's okay. That you know we, we set it too high, why are, we, why are we setting it too high? Or if it's too low, we've gone past it. But I think it's okay for us to set the goal and then if it's, if it's 
Wow. If we fail, mm -hmm. why are we failing at it? And then it gives us reasons to go back and look. And I think that's where it comes in difficulty with the student achievement is, you know, do we really want to go there and say we expect this? And I think as a board we're saying, yeah, we do. We want it to be at this number so we know where we are from today to the next time we look at it. What counts is what's counted. Mm -hmm. So can I get that maybe just to my colleagues, I know one of the questions that Stan started with was, you know, we've developed these strategic planning updates on our board calendar. As he said, we have five kind of primary goals. Um, is the, you know, we, and we have currently have got three dates kind of built into the calendar. Uh, what's your pleasure? I mean, I think there probably are some that to Tammy's point, are easily understood, easily tracked, probably don't take a whole lot of discussion. Um, those perhaps could be bundled and we could leave the, you know, the, 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 the more challenging topics to, to a single meeting. I, anybody opposed to the bundling, if you may? Uh, and we'll, we'll obviously get staff's recommendation as to which I of those. I might e even, you know, start out with what, you know, I think number one is student achievement. I think everybody's going to suggest that's probably the most complicated. So might we be smarter to start on number four since maybe, you know, that might be the easiest one. Because I guess my point is because that way we will be able to develop a system with the s stuff that's easier to digest and then subsequently We'll have some ideas in how we get to the end result um, when we get to the complicated but I, stuff. But I make I'm, sense. Just so I'm sure I understand, because I'm talking about, I'm talking more about the ongoing update strategic plan review. I, I don't know if you're talking about the yeah, I'm, setting the specific goals. I maybe the I'm saying both, but I, I okay. just I think it's you know like student achievement to Stan's concern, and I you know it took us an hour today just to get through that and 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 my concern is I think that one's going to be hard to figure out. Well, it's gonna one thing also to consider is you know the calendar lends itself you know Kevin may say well the best time for me is in the summer because of fiscal year's ending or starting. Lynn may say well this is when the student achievement data yeah. is the newest or available. So part of that is probably just yeah. the, the flow of our normal educational year. And that's year. where our committee comes in Matt. Yeah. That's where we yeah. should talk about it. You know how sometimes we're mm -hmm. like what do we want on the agenda? This is what's on the agenda. Yeah no I agree with that. And this I'm is what sure. we talk maybe about what I, what's going to be presented. Right. And So maybe what I might suggest is because you guys know some of those uniquenesses about timing etc maybe you put together a proposed sure. bundling at least for the three and if and we'll bring it to the board and if the board looks at that and says yeah those seem an okay pairing of a couple sure. here and there and if we say no we will we'll modify it from there but we'll get your input on terms of the right time of the year to be looking fairness at and I think that the timeline makes a lot of sense and maybe that timeline can dictate how many meetings we need if if that is in fact a question I don't think there's anybody on this board that would you know not show up to a meeting sure. if Correct. we felt it was important yep. can I make one point we need to make student achievement easy. We need to make that easy. Let's pick two or three, four things that really matter. That really move it. That really move the dial. Dashboard indicators. I don't, you know, there's, there's, we have more data on student achievement. Let's pick two or three or four areas that really count and let's dial in on them. Because we, you're right. Because we know, we know there's certain things well, we have to Well, court press, baby. All game long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And you know something Craig said earlier, you know the kind of priority projects. I think you know, my friend George down at the end talks a lot about uh, City of Dubuque. I think they've done a really good job of you know these are the eight things we want to do in the next two years, and these are the eight things we want to do in the next five years. I think you know that again gives us a little bit more meat, um, as, as Tom so eloquently said. You know, if we pick a few things. Um. Well, and I guess a way I would view that, Matt, in, in the educational world is that the, some things are constant. Mm -hmm. And then we can pick some other things that we want to add to yeah. that. Um, 
it's different when you're looking at building or sure. you know doing versus the one thing that's never going to go away is hopefully <laughs> student achievement. And we need to simplify that, I would agree, but that's right. always going to be the top of the list every year, year in, year out, because that's what we're here for. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other comments from the board? <laughs> good meeting. Good meeting. Yeah, it's good been great. It's a good, uh, good, uh, good discussion. We'll move forward with this and this is good. back. This is the yeah, best poll. Uh, yeah, I want to. <laughs> I do want to. I do want to make uh, take a moment to thank the staff because I do know that how how much time and effort you have all put into uh, into this document. And I and I I said this at the very beginning. Um, I really do as we continue to kind of uh, put the finishing touches on this thing. I really do agree that it will uh, and I've looked out at different websites different school districts both in and outside of Iowa and I would I would concur with uh, the superintendent's comment earlier we get this right the way even the format it is now we'll, we'll fill in the blanks that are missing but this will be as robust and as transparent a strategic plan as you're going to be able to find out there and I think that's something that was one of our goals when we first started out is we want to be this board has said from day one it wants to be held accountable and I think that's a big step in doing that so I, I want to thank the staff for they've made great uh, great work of that so I appreciate that very much they so. put in many many hours to to produce these documents in there I wouldn't train them for any other team all right no trades we're adjourned <laughs> thank you